Hey guys, Rander and Shades here, exercising my first to rights vlog style, and with a triple dosage of new shit. First of all, I'm filming on a not necessarily new camera because my family's owned this camera for a while, but I na am now in possession of it. And uh, this video is being edited on uh, some new editing software, a copy of Final Cut Pro that I managed to obtain, and also I'm wearing a new shirt, Wild Side. Um, an under the influence shirt that uh, I forget which label it was that um, oh, Capitol Records. Um, they found a surplus, I believe, of these, and they decided to put them up for sale. I decided, why not? Wildside, for those of you that don't know, was a glam metal band that came out in 1992. They put out a great album, but unfortunately, it was 1992, and the album really failed to make a big impact on the mainstream environment, but that is not important right now. This is the final installment of my 1,000 subscriber trilogy. This is probably the most personal video I've ever made, and will, will probably ever make. It's going to be about something I've dealt with my whole life that I'm not always the most open about. I usually only talk about this with very select close friends. But given that I've reached a thousand subscribers, I think I have a large enough audience that I can be able to open up about this particular aspect of my character. Watching this video will really make light of who I am as a person, why I do things the way I do at times, and explain certain difficulties I've dealt with over the 20 years I've been alive. And looking at the title, you've probably guessed by now what this video is about. Yes. I have Asperger's. Something I really want to make clear before I get into this here is that no, I am not doing this to gain sympathy. I'm not doing this to exploit the illness. And I am not trying to use Asperger's as a crutch. Lots of people on the internet like to use Asperger's or autism as an excuse for their behavior. And that's not what I'm doing with this video at all. It pisses me off greatly how when most people say they have Asperger's, the other person thinks they're trying to make an excuse. I've never done that before in my life, and I will never do that at any point in the future. The point of this video is just to educate you guys on Asperger's Syndrome and explain how it's affected me. Also, I know people are going to say I'm ripping off UTF's video on Asperger's. I don't give a shit. I am going to be taking a much different approach than he did. And I know I don't like UTF, but this is something I can really sympathize with him on and to an extent relate to him with. One other thing I want to say before I get things going here is that people with Asperger's and people with autism are not retarded. Autism and mental retardation are two completely different things. I don't get offended by much, but autism and Asperger's jokes and people using autism and retardation synonymously does get to me on much more of an emotional level than anything else. I remember when UTF's channel was terminated and a petition was started by my friend Justin, the thrash metal guru, to bring his channel back, and he was debating Life in a Tent about the issue. I remember Life in a Tent saying that everybody helping with the petition was just babying John and making him weak, and then he made a video on why people with Asperger's are dangerous for the internet. I never really had much respect for Life in a Tent in the first place, but hearing those words out of his mouth enraged me so much that he was brought down to the level where, to this day, I have absolutely no respect for him at all. But enough about that, let's get to some backstory. I was diagnosed with Asperger's in the spring of 1998, at the end of my second year of preschool. At the time, I had a very heavy and profound interest in the movie Toy Story, and playing with the toys I had based off of that movie, and also had a bit of difficulty making friends, so that led to the diagnosis. Initially, my parents were kind of freaked out about how it could complicate my growth and learning ability, but over time, people calmed down. What Asperger's is, is a neurological disorder on the autism spectrum. What neurological means is that it refers to the brain. And the autism spectrum is, picture this, imagine a line across the screen with 
this end being the low end, this end being the high end. It's on the low end of severity, so it's not as severe as really serious autism. I've known some kids growing up who have had things way more could imagine. They were never able to do the things that I was able to do, such as go to college. These kids went to special high schools and really can't live independently on their own. They need an adult with them. I've been very fortunate to have been able to do the various things I have because I could have had things way worse. How common is it, you might ask? Well, the spectrum is so vague that nobody knows how common it is. One thing I will say here is that you can't catch Asperger's. It's not something that's sexually transmitted. It's something you're basically born with and learn to cope with over the years, which is definitely the case for me. So now I'm going to describe the many characteristics of Asperger's and how they apply or used to apply to me. One thing that people with Asperger's have difficulty in a lot of the time is social interactions. Like I said earlier, I had a lot of difficulty making friends when I was younger. It's something I have gotten better at over time, but Asperger's has made interacting with people quite hard. I'm a very shy person and am oftentimes very quiet in social environments because I'm afraid of saying the wrong thing or making things even more awkward. Because of that, I don't go out as often, but that's not to say I don't go out at all. The people I associate with, I have an easy time talking to, both online and offline. Like I said in an earlier video, I relate best to musicians and actors because they speak in a language that's easy for me to understand, and I'm grateful for that because otherwise, high school would have been a really lonely time. People with Asperger's also tend to not be able to live independently, but that doesn't apply to me. Like I said, I'm able to go to college in a completely different state also, and not have any difficulty in doing so. Another characteristic of Asperger's is earlier in life they tend to think that other people think exactly like them. They think that everybody likes the same things and hates the same things. They don't have as easy of a grasp on the fact that people think and feel differently than them. When I was in preschool, I really loved the show Blue's Clues. I had a stuffed blue that I brought to preschool one day thinking that the other kids were going to be jealous and think I'm awesome and all that, because come on, who doesn't love Blue's Clues? But instead, a couple of the kids made fun of me and I was just blindsided. But over time, I learned to think of others and their feelings. Usually people with Asperger's are factually oriented and literal, and they have trouble understanding figures of speech. They pay really close attention to various details of things, and I can sure as hell do that with music. I can listen very closely to the point where I can almost dissect the song down to a T. With figures of speech, that applies to me greatly. That's what made English class pretty difficult for me, because a lot of the novels we were reading, such as The Great Gatsby and Of Mice and Men, were very well known for their usage of figurative language and imagery, and my lack of understanding of that language made understanding the story pretty difficult, so I would always need someone to explain to me exactly what happened in the chapter. Same thing to a much greater extent with Shakespeare. This also makes understanding sarcasm quite difficult. At times I can tell when someone is being sarcastic, but most of the time I think the person is being serious. I'm a person that values sincerity in people, so I guess that's why I think people are being serious when they're actually sarcastic. Two things that are heavily associated with Asperger's are anxiety and depression. I've never been diagnosed with any form of depression, but there have been times when I've been in some depressive states, feeling like I'm in such a rut thinking about the uncertainties of life and so on and so forth. Anxiety is the real issue here. I get anxiety attacks a lot. I don't take any medication for it, at least not anymore, because I didn't really feel it did anything. But there are a lot of things that sent me into some pretty intense anxiety attacks, and I'll give you some examples. In the fall of 2012, at the very beginning of my first year of college, I was talking with some friends and making some jokes from the movie Anchorman. We were talking about getting together to watch the movie, but nobody gave me any details as to whose room we were going to and when we were going there. So I was sitting in my room for two hours, waiting for someone to either come to my door, text me, or message me on Facebook given me the details, all the while I was thinking, what if they started without me? What if they ditched me on purpose because they think I'm a nuisance? And shit like that. Eventually the next day one of them told me it didn't end up happening and I was like, fuck. 
I was put into such a crazy anxiety attack for nothing. One thing that causes an anxiety attack in a lot of people with Asperger's is the need to follow a routine, and if that routine changes at all, an anxiety attack ensues. I'm one of those people. I need routine. I always need to have shit I need to do written out, so I make a lot of lists on this thing. Um, and schedules, and if something changes, I get pissed. I despise change. People with Asperger's oftentimes have a very high level vocabulary. We know this simply by looking at Danzy the Dictionary. That doesn't apply as much to me, but there are some words I know that not a lot of people my age can know. Can't really think of any off the top of my head, though. Another popular trait amongst people with Asperger's, random tics. I'm not gonna explain any of the little tics that I have, because you guys are just gonna make a game out of it, be assholes about it. Something else that some people with Asperger's have is sensitivity towards smell, taste, and texture. This applies more so to a very good friend of mine from back home who was sensitive to stepping barefoot on tile flooring and to wearing denim. He never wore jeans at all. Sometimes they can also be formal and dress rather pedantic in the way they dress, but definitely not the case with me. Band shirts and jeans every day is anything but formal. They can also have certain types of speech and language. Their speech generally includes verbosity, abrupt transitions, loudness, prosody, and metaphors that are only meaningful to them. Since figurative language is such a hassle to me, I always go by, don't say something if you don't know what it means. And most of the time when I talk, I tend to think I'm not being heard because no one responds, so I talk louder, and then I'm told, shut up, Mike. What Asperger's is probably best known for is that the people who have it have these very intense interests in specific topics. They talk about it almost all the time because it's easy for them to talk about. I've already given you a glimpse of that with my fondness of Toy Story from ages four to, we'll say, six. Over time, these interests change to other things or different variations of the earlier thing. From about ages 7 to 10, my main topic of interest was various Nicktoons. From ages 11 to 13, it was kind of the same thing except I really liked to draw comics with my own characters like the comic book I showed in my last q and Excuse me. From age 14 until the present day, it's been nothing but music, although I don't like calling it an Asperger obsession, since it's something I've dedicated so much of my life to in hopes of one day having a career in music or production. But with music, it will seem very apparent. I love talking about music just as much as I love making it. Music is very easy for me to talk about, and something I feel I know far too much about, to the point where some people refer to me as a musical encyclopedia. And you kind of got a glimpse of that when I started talking about the band on my shirt at the beginning of this video. Here's a list of some people with Asperger's or who have had Asperger's when they were alive. Adam Young, aka Owl City, Al Gore, Alfred Hitchcock, Andy Kaufman, Andy Warhol, Bill Gates, Bob Dylan, Charles Schultz, the creator of The Peanuts, Craig Nichols, the vocalist of the band The Vines, Dan Aykroyd, Daryl Hannah, Gary Newman, George Orwell, James Durbin, James Taylor, Jim Henson, the creator of The Muppets, John Denver, Robin Williams, and Satoshi Tajiri, the creator of Pokemon. Some people who are speculated to have had Asperger's include Abraham Lincoln, Albert Einstein, Alexander Graham Bell, who, if you don't know who he is, then you should be ashamed because he invented the telephone. Benjamin Franklin, Emily Dickinson, Frederick Nietzsche, famous German philosopher, George Washington, Henry Ford, Henry David Thoreau, Isaac Newton, Jane Austen, Ludwig von Beethoven, Marilyn Monroe, Mark Twain, Michael Jackson, Michelangelo, Nikola Tesla, Richard Strauss, Thomas Edison, Thomas Jefferson, Vincent van Gogh, Virginia Woolf, and Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Also, some fictional characters that are portrayed as Aspergian include uh, Dustin Hoffman's character in the movie Rain Man and Sheldon from The Big Bang Theory. If you've seen the movie Rain Man or have watched The Big Bang Theory before, you'll understand what I mean. Rain Man is a great movie. And Big Bang Theory, in my opinion anyway, is a really awesome show. 
So, yeah. Now you may be asking yourself, is there a cure for Asperger's? Unfortunately, no. The best people really can do is learn to cope with it, which is something I've done for many years. Generally, medication is needed, but like I said, I don't use it, but don't use me as an example because Asperger's varies from person to person, like I said earlier in this video. Usually, people with Asperger's need to be in a special ed room. In middle school and high school, I spent a good bit of my free periods in the special ed room getting all the help and the support I needed with my academics. I stopped going there my senior year when I was becoming more self-reliant. These days I go to the help center here for tutoring and writing because it's something I still am pretty weak on. Sometimes I need to take lower level classes which I've been fortunate enough to not have to do. I've only taken one intro course in high school, intro to pre-calculus, because regular level was going way, way too fast for me. The only higher level courses I've taken in high school are Honors Psych and AP Music Theory, both of which I did very well in. So thank you guys very much for watching this video and giving me the opportunity to open up to you about all the various shit I've dealt with throughout my life. You guys are an awesome audience and it means a lot to have you guys around, all 1,000 plus of you. Stay tuned for more videos from me in the future and have a nice day. I'm Shades and I'll see you next time. <laughs>